Today in this video, we're gonna show you just how long it takes to remove tannins from your aquarium water using a simple device just like this. Now, this video is by no means about efficiency or how to build something cheap or easy. I will say, however, that this was cheap and easy to make. Um, I did have parts laying around already, uh, and then I bought a couple extra parts, which is only about $3 in parts, and it took me less than three minutes to put together, as you see here. Um, very, very simple to do. Uh, this is a 55-gallon tank. The flow rate on this in particular is about a gallon per minute, and there's about a cup of carbon in there. Um, so let me backtrack a little bit. If you don't know what tannins are, tannins are tannic acid. It's what causes the water to turn yellow, obviously. And it's released by things uh, that are breaking down, such as like um, driftwood, such as this Malaysian driftwood here, or leaves. Uh, so if you make tea, it's the same exact thing. So your tea water is a yellow-brown color. That's what tannic acid is. Um, it's very good for aquatic life. It's very good for human consumption. Um, so you don't want to necessarily remove all of them. Uh, so I'm just going to do in this video, remove most of them. Um, some people don't like it because it's just not aesthetically pleasing for their tank. So if you're not running a, a, a planted tank, you're going to be running a carbon in your carbon filter continuously. But in my case, I'm not running carbon continuously. So um, that's why I have the buildup of the, of the yellow water here. So the other way you can remove tannins is uh, doing water changes. You can dilute it down. But at the rate this turns the water yellow, uh, even though it is cured, the wood is cured, um, I'd have to be doing pretty frequent water changes, and very frequent water changes are not good. Uh, it stresses your fish out, um, causes other problems. So water changes are good, just less frequently. Uh, so the other thing about the tank here is, uh, it, it is since it is a planted tank, um, even though it's low-tech and low-light plants, plants still absorb organic compounds in the water, and carbon removes some of those. So that's the other reason why I'm not continuously running carbon. Um, the other uh, part of that is, is because the water is yellow, uh, the light I'm using is actually um, a little less than one watt per gallon. Uh, I'm just sorry, no, it is a little more than one watt per gallon, but that's before it's actually being filtered by the yellow water. Uh, so now that it is this yellow, uh, I want to actually remove some of them to uh, allow more light to get down to the plants. You can't really see quite in video here how yellow the water actually is, uh, just because there's white balancing on the camera. Um, so if you view it from the side here, you can actually see it by looking through the side of the tank and seeing a window and the light coming through. You can see just how yellow it is that way by looking through the water and then not looking through the water here. Um, so you can see it is quite yellow. And in person, it looks a lot different than on camera. That's why I'm showing it to you that way. Um, also, since this is a tannic acid, uh, it does change the pH of the water. It does soften the water too. Um, how much depends on your water hardness. So for those of you who already know about uh, this stuff, I'm just gonna throw some numbers out there. Uh, before I actually do this experiment, before I do the time lapse, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna test the pH and I'm gonna test the pH after. And my pH right now is sitting at 7.4. It's always that, it's continuous. Uh, my KH is between four and five. My GH is about eight to nine, and my TDS is about 210. Um, so we're gonna test the pH before and after, and uh, then we'll come back and, and see how everything is. Okay, so we're back. It's uh, about a week later now, and I had ran my carbon with that little device I showed you there for three days straight. And for the first 24 hours, what I did was I did a, uh, a time lapse from the side of the tank looking through it that way, so you can see the coloration change uh, from the yellow color to a slightly yes, less yellow color. So you can see that here and it's uh, the most significant difference was within the first I'd say 12 hours and then it slowed, it slowed down from there. Um, and then the next two days all I did was a short 10 second clip for each day at the end of the day. So you see day two here and then you, say day, you see day three. Um, not a huge difference in the amount of tannins that it removed uh, for that amount of carbon. I'm sure it got expended actually probably pretty quickly because of that. Um, if that's not enough for you to see, you can actually see, I took a picture from the top of the tank looking down at the white substrate and I took it before and I took it after. Uh, and you can see that it's basically from like a slight banana color or like a ripe banana color to then it turns to like basically like the inside of the banana peel color if that's any good reference for you. Um, it's 
it's like I said, it's a little different in person and a little different on camera from what you can see. Um, it's, there's no real way to show you uh, how different it actually is in person without actually being in person. So um, tannins, uh, they take a lot to remove. So take a lot of carbon over a longer period of time. Uh, there's the other product, I think it's called Seachem Purigen. Not sure if that's right, um, but apparently that works a little bit better to remove tannins. Uh, and then you can recharge it, obviously. But carbon, uh, it, it doesn't remove everything from the water. It doesn't make it like perfectly crystal clear. It doesn't take away the need to do water changes. It simply removes things like phenols, which are odors, uh, removes uh, discoloration such as tannins and you know organics. Um, it also removes like things like proteins from the water and it removes uh, some heavy metals, uh, a lot of trace and macro elements that you would give your plant. So that's another reason why you wouldn't want, wouldn't want to run carbon in a planted tank. Because uh, I did notice a little bit of melt back on one of my crypts here behind me after like a day after I ran the carbon. Not sure if that was related to it or not, but it didn't. none of the other plants were melting back like that before until I did that. So um, it doesn't remove nitrates, nitrites, or ammonia, so that doesn't do any of that stuff. However, when the carbon does become expanded, uh, it still acts as a biofiltration, so you get your beneficial, beneficial bacteria that kind of uh, attach themselves to the carbon. So it still does something. It just doesn't continue to remove the odors and discoloration. Um, so I hope that helps anybody had any questions. Maybe there's like a little gem in the video here you might have found you might answer a question for you. Um, I just wanted to do a little experiment for myself just to see how well uh, the carbon would actually work to remove the tannins. And actually it's a week later now, so it's been about four or five days later now since I've actually finished the experiment and the coloration on the tank is kind of back to the way it was before I did the carbon. And actually what I found is that just doing a simple 30, 20 to 30% water change took more of the coloration out by dilution when you refill it than the carbon did at running it, uh, running it for three days. Um, so it's probably better to not take the organics out of your water column if you're growing plants and just rather dilute them down rather than remove them. Uh, so I hope that helps everyone.